if Mike Vrabel and Rand Carthon are headed for a divorce, I'm riding with Rand Carthon. I'll explain why on today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked on Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Roland. Titans fans, today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. If the Titans are headed for a divorce, I'm sticking with Rand Carthon. I'm gonna explain why. Also, We got more evidence on Monday that this is a Mike Vrabel power play. We're going to go over all the recent reports, and this story may drag on for a while. I'll explain why. Before we get into all that, thank you for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year long on all apps and always for free. Make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day here at the Locked on Titans podcast. Shout out to my everydayers out there. Tuning in Monday through Friday. Couldn't do it without you. Let me know who you are down below. Also, show's always free, folks. If you could, throw a thumbs up on the video. But with that being said, if the Tennessee Titans are headed for a divorce between Rand Carthon and Mike Vrabel, which seems even more likely after all the news that we got on Monday, I'm riding with Rand Carthon. And it's simple. Look at what Rand Carthon has done in one year as the general manager for the Tennessee Titans. He drafted Peter Skaronsky, Will Levis, and Tajay Spears. Those are three key building blocks for this team for the next five to eight to ten years, depending on the player. Not only that, but you look at free agency. He brought in Arden Key, awesome contributor, had near seven sacks. He brought in Sean Murphy Bunting, who I continue to say is a very good average starting cornerback in the NFL. He brought in Aziz Alshire, who set the Titans' single-season record in tackles. He brought in DeAndre Hopkins, a 1,000-yard receiver on an incredible contract structure. He brought in Daniel Brunskill, who may be the Titans' most consistent offensive lineman throughout the season. And after Nicholas Petit-Ferrer all of a sudden got suspended, he made an improvised move and brought in Chris Hubbard, who is one of the best right tackles in the NFL for the first nine weeks of the season. Not only that, but the Titans have had a terrible kicker situation for the last five years. He traded for Nick Folk. That was a great move. Not only that, but he got great value in the Kevin Byer trade. Everybody killed that trade when it happened, but now with Byard's struggles in Philadelphia, that looks like even more of a shrewd move to trade Byard when they did. Talk about safeties. He claimed Kevon Wallace. Kevon Wallace has been the Titans' second best safety all year long. He got Otis Reese, an undrafted free agency who everybody's very excited about. And unlike the guy before Rand Carthon, he locked down Jeffrey Simmons with a long term deal when the Jeffrey Simmons of offense, AJ Brown, previous guy wasn't able to get that done. Now, you want to get outside of just player personnel stuff. You want to just get out of player acquisition. Look at the front office. I have been making this point on this show for years. Talk about everydayers. My every years, I'll call it. Y'all have been listening to me for a while now. This team must modernize their front office process. The Titans for the last forever have been the least analytically inclined front office in the NFL. Seth Walter, ESPN, writes an article every year going over how many analytics staffers and how analytics plays into the front office process for any and every NFL team. And the Titans are always at the very, very bottom. Okay? Whether you think the analytics or eye test or whatever, don't you want to have more data? Even if you don't listen to the analytics, to have the data to make a decision... Anyone who is a mature decision maker knows the best way to make an informed decision is to get as much information as you possibly can and then use that information to make the right call. All right. So for the Titans to completely ignore analytics 
while the rest of the NFL is using it successfully, it's asinine. Do you want this team to be a mom and pop shop going against corporate America? Or do you want to meet corporate America and be a part of the NFL powers? What do you think is the right thing to do? What do you think gets the Titans closer to the Super Bowl? Ignoring analytics or embracing them and improving that part of your organization? Rand Carthon has done that. He brought in Chad Brinker as an assistant general manager. Chad Brinker brought over his own. Like, he's not taking models from other places. His own intellectual property analytics models on injuries. The Titans had a much better year with injuries this year than they had the past two years. He brought in analytics for salary cap stuff. The Titans didn't give out any punitive contracts last all season that compromised their financial flexibility going forward. They took lottery tickets with the limited resources that they had. Not only that, but he brought in data analytics for scouting and models for scouting. And again, the Titans just had their best draft class since 2019. So, Rand Carthon has done all of that. He acquired all of those players, all of the good stuff that we liked from this bad season. Most of it is because of Rand Carthon. I mean, come on. What are we doing here? So, not only the player acquisition side of it, but the front office modernization of it, creating an analytics staff, hiring people who care about that stuff, giving the credit to the data that it deserves because he came from a modern, forward-thinking organization in one, the Los Angeles Rams, and then two, the San Francisco 49ers. Do you want the Titans to be more like what the Titans have been the last 25 years? Or do you want the Titans to be more like the Rams and the 49ers? Because I know what I want. I know what I choose. And then look at it on the other side. You want to go with Mike Vrabel? Mike Vrabel has lost 21 games in the last two years. 21 games, double-digit losses in back-to-back seasons. One without Rand Carthon, one with, okay? And look at what Mike Vrabel has done to hurt this team. All right, he always wants to talk about not hurting the team. Well, Mike Vrabel was, one, blindly loyal to terrible coaches. He kept Todd Downing for two seasons. Todd Downing, two seasons. Not only that, but Craig Aukerman got fired mid-season when the Titans have had bad special teams play for the last five years, all right? And you want to talk about how Craig Aukerman sticking around drastically impacted the Tennessee Titans season. Number one, he got two punts blocked back-to-back that screwed the Titans in that game and got Ryan Stonehouse, the best punter in the NFL, majorly hurt, which required surgery. Not only that, but he also caused the Titans to have an issue with their holder because Ryan Stonehouse was the holder, so then he got hurt. Ryan Tannehill holding, missed extra point. Got to get a new punter, and Ty Zettner. Zettner drops a football. Zettner holding for Nick Folk in another game, a missed extra point. So two big-time missed extra points that would not have happened if Ryan Stonehouse did not get hurt. But Ryan Stonehouse got hurt because of the incompetence of Craig Aukerman as a special team coach, which comes from the incompetence of Mike Vrabel and his blind loyalty to bad coaches. Hurting the team. Not only that, but Mike Vrabel's over-reliance on special teams value, Mike Vrabel's over-reliance on versatility, all of that, all of that hurts this team. So you can't tell me that Mike Vrabel hasn't hurt the team with his decisions in the last few years. And then outside of loyalty to bad coaches and an over-reliance on special teams players to where the Titans don't have any good wide receivers, his ego. That is the center of it all. I have said for years, I talk about every dayers, every years of this show. No, I have been talking about how Mike Vrabel is an egomaniac for years now. And all of the downside of Mike Vrabel comes from his inflated ego. Mike Vrabel stole play calling duties away from Dean Pease, one of the most respected defensive coordinators in the NFL for my lifetime. At halftime of the Kansas City Chiefs AFC Championship game, the Titans up in that game, Mike Vrabel stole play calling duties away from Dean Pease and it allowed the Chiefs to come back and win that game and prevent the Titans from making their first Super Bowl since I was nine years old. That is hurting the team. So you cannot tell me that if you have to choose between the two that you are certain that Mike Vrabel is the right choice because he always talks about hurting the team and that is cold, hard evidence that he has hurt this team 
more than helped it recently. So forgive me, but I'm going with the first guy we talked about. I'm sticking with Rand Carthon and letting him build a modern organization rather than hanging on to caveman football that Mike Vrabel wants to play. And again, we're talking about the ego. Mike Vrabel's trying to pull a power play again. Let's go over all the recent reports that came out on Monday. Before we do, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook. Look, the NFL regular season may be wrapping up, but the playoffs are here, folks, and that means there is still time to get in on the action. Right now, new customers to FanDuel Sportsbook can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. All you got to do is place a $5 bet. That's right. $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use, y'all. Like spreads, money lines, over-unders, single game or same game parlays, all of that. So make sure that while the football season is still here, you take advantage. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Titans fans, let's continue today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, again, nearly 25 years as a Tennessee Titans fanatic, a certified film junkie who has been hosting this program since before the 2019 season. I got a ton of great off-season content coming your way. We're going to be talking about roster construction, salary cap management, free agent preview, draft preview, mock draft Mondays for the next four months. So much coming your way. Make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day here at the Locked On Titans podcast. But with that being said, I just told you guys why I'm rocking with Rand Carthon over Mike Vrabel. Let me know down below. Are you sticking with Rand Carthon? Are you sticking with Mike Vrabel? And look, some of you guys may be saying right now, they don't have to make that choice. Well, Mike Vrabel may be forcing them to, and if he isn't forcing them to make that choice, he is certainly doing his best to downplay and downgrade Rand Carthon. And all of the recent reports all point in the same direction. And let me just say this before we get into all of the reports that came out on Sunday or Monday because there is a slew of information. If you're somebody who says, oh, it's fake news. I don't like what I hear. I don't like hearing that. I hope that's not true. It's fake news. Oh, this is all just smoke. None of this is real. Oh, this is all uh, um, unsubstantialized. Yes, there we go. Then that's fine. That's fine. You can dig your head in the sand if you want. But we have had a slew of reports now from every corner of the NFL, whether it be locally, whether it be the biggest national voices and biggest national reporters, Ian Rappaport, Adam Schefter, Jordan Schultz, Diana Rossini, who is now all of a sudden ready, steady Vrabel from Diana Rossini. Well, she changed her tune on Monday. There is so much going on and there is so much smoke here that if you refuse to acknowledge that there is a real fire then you're just digging your head in the sand and you can go ahead. But us logical Tennessee Titans fans, we're going to acknowledge that Mike Vrabel is trying to make a power play here. So I want to remind you guys of what Tom Pelissero said on Sunday morning. I'm putting it up on the screen right now, screen right now for the YouTube crowd. He said, Tennessee hired Carthon a year ago over in-house candidate Ryan Cowden, who league sources believe to be Vrabel's preferred candidate. Okay, so Ryan Cowden, was Mike Vrabel's preferred candidate. Okay, that okay, that makes some sense. Well, let's look at this. And I already know the snickers. I already know the jokes. I already know the comments. I can see them in my head. Jared Stillman, and shout out to Titans Film Room for the tweet. But Jared Stillman, on his show, said, per a league source, Vrabel is going to request that ownership hire someone to oversee both he and Carthon in a position that will have the final say. Stillman reported that Vrabel does not want to control the entire roster, 
but he also wants clearly defined roles for assistant GMs, Chad Brinker and Anthony Robinson mentioned as a possibility that depending on how things unfold, Vrabel could be traded to new England or Washington and could even be fired today, Monday citing blow ups arguments, blow ups, blah, blah, blah that have happened as a possible reason. So Mike Vrabel has been blowing up behind the scenes and the Titans may just be sick of it. A lot of information out there right now looks like things are still very much unsettled and no decision has been made yet regarding the future of the Titans at this time. So just so you guys know what the actual report is here from Stillman is that Mike Vrabel does not want Rand Carthon to not have a boss. Mike Vrabel wants the Titans to hire a football czar, a director of football operations so that Rand Carthon has a boss. And shout out to Jared Stillman, who again, you guys could say he's not, he did have good information on the Kevin Byard thing. He's had stories right before. And again, all the smoke and all the fire. All I'm saying is, it looks like Mike Vrabel is going to the organization and saying, if you want me to stay, then you got to hire a boss for Rand Carthon. Why would that happen? So that Mike Vrabel can overrule Rand Carthon when they disagree. We've heard neither have final say. It's a collaborative process. Well, Mike Vrabel's like, hey, you need to hire somebody so that when I don't agree with what Rand Carthon is doing, I can go to them and say, make him stop. Make Rand stop. I don't want to do that. And right now, it's supposed to be collaborative. But when Mike Vrabel doesn't get his way, he wants somebody he can go to who will overrule and go over the head of Rand Carthon. Mike Vrabel is making a power play. That's why he wanted Ryan Cowden as the general manager because then he could tell Ryan Cowden what to do. Then it would be Mike Vrabel having total control. So it's so obvious to connect all of the dots here. I mean, it's just so clear. And look, Diana Rossini a couple of months ago, Ready, steady, Vrabel. Oh, Diana Rossini on Monday. The coaching staff and players in Tennessee haven't been given an update about the status of Mike Vrabel. I was told they are all waiting to hear. Why is everybody waiting to hear about the status of Mike Vrabel if it's ready, steady, Vrabel? That's a great question. You know what I mean? So, like, connect the dots here. Mike Vrabel wanted Ryan Cowden, not Rand Carthon. Now, Mike Vrabel and Rand Carthon disagree on what to do, and Mike Vrabel wants to put somebody above Rand Carthon so that he can get his way when he disagrees. It is an egomaniacal power play once again. I mean, between the downfalls of Mike Vrabel we talked about in the first segment, this clear ego-driven power play to get his way on the roster, between all of that, how can you look at this and be like, Yeah, this is going to work out. Like at this point, with everything we've heard, with all the rumors, with all the problems, how in the world could this relationship possibly go back to normal? How in the world could this relationship possibly work out long term when there are so many problems here? It can't, folks. It can't. It can't. The Titans are going to have to choose between Mike Vrabel or Rand Carthon because at the end of the day, If Mike Vrabel gets his way, then that means that Rand Carthon is being demoted and Rand Carthon would be disrespected by that. And if Mike Vrabel doesn't get his way and they say, no, we're not hiring a boss for Rand Carthon, he's the general manager, then Mike Vrabel is not going to want to stay around because he wants more say and he wants more power. So there uh, there is no turning back now, folks. There is no turning back. We have all of this smoke. All of these reports coming locally, nationally, for months and months and months. And again, I'll say this. We might need to apologize to Mike Lombardi because he might have had this right from the start. So, and all of this has started since Mike Rabel went and rubbed elbows with Robert Kraft in the New England Patriots press box. Don't you think they might have talked about what they want to do after the season? So... I'm sticking with Rand Carthon because Mike Rabel is an egomaniac trying to get power over Rand Carthon because he wasn't happy with the hire in the first place. So, I'm sorry. I want modern football, not caveman football. I'm sticking with Rand Carthon. And this ego-driven power play nonsense that we have seen from Mike Rabel, I'm sick of it. And at the end of the day, you've been in relationships, folks. Whether you're a man, woman, non-binary, I don't care what you are, you've been in relationships and you know like I know, there are certain things that happen 
where you have gone past a breaking point and there is no way to get it back. And we are there now. But that doesn't mean that things will be resolved quickly. This may take a while. This may drag on and NFL rules dictate it. So I'm going to explain why I think that and why the rules think that here in just a second. Before I do, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made simple. It's the most fun. It's the easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. Here's how it works. So every player on Prize Picks has a projection. These are just random examples. I know the Titans season is over, but Will Levis, 200 passing yards. Derrick Henry, 75 rushing yards. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, four catches. All you do is you pick two to six players and you say whether those players are going to do more or less than the prize picks projections. If you win and you hit, you can get up to 25 times your money. I mean, it's so simple. You could set up your lineup in 60 seconds or less. So make sure that you go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code. Locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100 again. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. It's prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Titans fans, let's cap off today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Again, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, 25 years as a Tennessee Titans fanatic, certified film junkie, breaking down the X's and O's with you guys every single day. Want to tell you guys, I'm looking at my cell phone right now. I am. I'm not trying to be unprofessional or anything like that, but this Mike Vrabel news, what's going to happen with Mike Vrabel here, what the resolution will be, it could break at any moment. I want to make sure I give you guys the most up-to-date information. And if for some reason, the news breaks after I've released this episode, I'll be back on here with a live update for you guys as well. But we talked about how I'm riding with Rank Harthon over Mike Vrabel, and I explained why pretty passionately. Then we talked about all these recent reports and how if you still think this is just smoke, <laughs> you're lying to yourself, buddy. Um, but with that being said, That doesn't mean that this is going to be resolved anytime soon. And there's a good chance that this story drags out for multiple weeks. And it's not just because that's what I think. Look at the NFL rules and they will dictate that. So I'll explain all the rules and why. Before we get into it again, thank you for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Also want to let you guys know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's called Locked On Sports Today. It's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts from Locked On, plus national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Be a part of history. But with that being said, again, this may take a while, folks. This may not be resolved anytime soon because of the way the NFL rules work. I want to bring up one last report here from uh, Jordan Schultz from Bleacher Report. He says, as the Titans weigh head coach Mike Vrabel's future this week, he's interested in returning to the Patriots. Should New England part ways with Bill Belichick? Shocker, right? Shocker. Okay, great. Yeah, so let me... First, start off by saying this. The Titans can't just fire Mike Vrabel. They can't do it, man. That would be stupid. All right? I've said before, I think that Mike Vrabel is a good coach. That doesn't mean he is the right coach for this rebuilding team. All right? Period. I've said that. So, don't act like I'm up here saying Mike Vrabel isn't a good coach. And that is why some of you guys will say, if Mike Vrabel is a bad coach. If the Titans want to get rid of Mike Vrabel, why would other teams want him? They don't want to get rid of him because he's a bad coach. It's because he's trying to take over the organization, demote Rand Carthon, 
causing a bunch of problems so that he can get his way and he can go to New England. All right? And since that's the case, do not give him what he wants. Do not let Mike Vrabel bully the organization into firing him. Do not do that. He has value around the league. If another team wants him, they will need to trade for him. Period. Point blank. End of conversation. It's that simple. Do not give away an asset that could return you value in a trade. I don't care if it's player, coach, whatever. But... A lot of you guys are going to ask how that would work, okay? So let's go over some of the rules about hiring coaches in the NFL right now and why they tell us this may not be resolved this week. This may not be resolved in the short term. Number one, right now, teams can only have virtual interviews with internal candidates or outside of the NFL candidates. So if the Titans fired Mike Rabel, right now they could talk to Charles London, Tim Kelly, or they could talk to Jim Harbaugh. You know what I mean? That's either internal candidates or outside the NFL entirely. All right? If a team loses in the wild card, or or if a team is already eliminated, or they have a buy in the wild card, you can have a virtual interview with them then. If they're a team that is playing in the wild card, You're not allowed to talk to that coach even virtually until three days after they're eliminated. All right? And then you're not allowed to have in-person interviews with people until after January 22nd. So we're talking about divisional weekend. The Titans can't even have an in-person interview with a coach until after divisional weekend. So why would the Titans fire Mike Vrabel right now? when they can't even really get a new coach and interview new coaches that they would want until two weeks from now. It doesn't make any sense. And likewise, if the Titans are going to trade Mike Rabel to the New England Patriots or something like that, well, the Patriots can't do that yet. Why? The Rooney rule. You can't just trade for Mike Rabel, a whitehead coach, and not interview a minority candidate or a female candidate. You can't do that. It's against the rules. So, For the Titans, let's say the Titans are going to trade Mike Vrabel to the Patriots. Let's say the Patriots, who have Bill Belichick under contract, are going to trade Bill Belichick to San Diego or Atlanta. That's what the rumors are right now. Diana Russini also said on Monday that if Belichick was available, Atlanta would be interested. The dots are all starting to connect. All right? Patriots trade Belichick to Atlanta. The Titans trade Vrabel to New England. It's all starting to connect, folks, with the rumors, with the reports, with the smoke. It's all coming together full circle. So, what would have to happen here is, over the next two weeks, three weeks maybe even, the Patriots would have to do interviews and satisfy the Rooney Rule. The Titans would have to do interviews and satisfy the Rooney Rule. Now, You talk about, hey, they're limited. They can only talk to internal candidates or external candidates. Well, they can talk to their internal candidates that satisfy the Rooney Rule. Now, you may be typing right now, that is not in the spirit of the Rooney Rule. And I agree with you. It's not. It's basically just checking boxes and not actually doing what it's supposed to do. You can have your thoughts on that if you want. But if Arthur Blank wants to hire Bill Belichick, or Robert Kraft wants to hire Mike Vrabel, they should be able to run their business how they see fit, too. So, here's what I'm telling you. No matter what's going to happen here, if the Titans don't just fire Mike Vrabel outright, which they shouldn't, this is going to take a while because things have to be satisfied. Boxes have to be checked. Things have to be played out before the Titans could make this move or the Patriots could make their move. So, whether you like this story, you hate this story, The odds are, based on NFL hiring rules that we just talked about and the particular situations of both these teams, this may take a while to get figured out, which means it's not going away, it's not going out of the news, and it's not going away from what we're going to be talking about for the next few weeks. So this is the biggest thing going on with this team right now. And it may stay that way for a few weeks because of all the stuff. Stuff that we just talked about. And at the end of the day, no matter what, it's a risk for the Titans. If you fire Mike Vrabel and get nothing for him, 
that's a risk because who knows who you're going to hire next and you didn't get any draft picks in return. But if you hold on to Vrabel, think if there might be a trade going, you might have a disgruntled coach who you might have to part ways with in a couple of weeks when a trade doesn't materialize and then you've fallen behind the interview process. So no matter what, Mike Vrabel's ego has put the Titans in a terrible position and at the end of the day, again, I don't know how you come back from this. A clean break is probably what's needed. But with that being said, again, if anything happens, I'm going to be here breaking it down with you guys. But that is going to do it for today's episode. Let me know how you feel down below about Mike Vrabel, Rand Carthon, the situation. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titan.